Question for you. Actually, not a question. Let me give you a scenario. Picture walking into a science lab and there being a, a table. And this table is full of magnetic plates, these little squares that are four inches by four inches. Okay? But then in the middle of that table, there is a bigger magnet, one that is four inches by eight inches. If you were to take that magnet and somehow score it perfectly down the middle, such that you have one side that's four by four and the other side that's four by four, yeah, that's right, <laughs> then break it in half somehow. You, you perfect cut, perfect incision, you're able to cut this magnet in half. Do you now have two completely different magnets? Or is that the same magnet? I want y'all to think about that. Because in today's edition of Maddie's Rap, we're going to be discussing two very ex existential, that's the word I want, two very existential elements of the so-called twin flame slash divine counterpart experience. Existence, if you will. It's not an experience, something that just, it happens once and then it goes away. We're talking about magnets and separation. Two very existential elements of twin flames. Magnetism and separation. Coming up on this edition of Maddie's Rap. Stick around. Welcome back to another edition of Maddie's Rap. I'm your host, the world-renowned author and storyteller, Matt D. Talford, author of some amazing books that you want in your library. And I showed you all the thumbnails before this video started. There'll be more thumbnails at the end, and there'll be links in the description box to where you can look at a, uh, let me turn this off so I'm, I'm not getting these interruptions. There'll be links in the description box where you can read synopses of these books because I may not go into the description at the end. Now, um, before, first off, let me, let me welcome back my returning subscribers and my new subscribers. I thank you guys for being a part of this journey with me. Thank you for being a part of the Maddie's Rap experience. I do this for you guys. If this is it, if this is your first time watching me, then thank you for clicking on my thumbnail. I hope that you find this today's presentation to be not only entertaining, but informative. Okay. And uplifting. Cause that's the deal. That's, that's what I want to do. I want everybody that watches anything I do to leave feeling better than you did when you clicked on the thumbnail. All right. That's my goal. Now, um, twin flames. I do want to say this, this is one that I'm planning to be my final twin flame video, at least for the time being. Now I have to say that I had to throw that little disclaimer in there at the end, because you know what I always say, if you want to make the creator, if you want to make God, if you want to make the divine, if you want to make source laugh, tell them what you are or what you aren't going to do. Okay. And let it be contrary to something that's in your plan, that that's in his plan for your life. Okay. Or in your soul contract for those of y'all that are familiar with that. Um, if it's contrary to what you got in your contract or contrary to what you came here to do or contrary to something that he's got designed for you to do, <laughs> he's laughing at you. Okay. So, um, but anyway, that being said, maybe I'll make him laugh today. Maybe I don't, I don't know. Today I'm planning on this being my last twin flame video, at least for the time being. I will, however, leave some links to the earlier ones that I did. So I've got maybe three or four others that I've done. Um, I'll put some links in the description box to those. And I am going to leave you guys with uh, someone that I consider to be probably one of the best teachers of the Twin Flame experience or journey that I've run across in my own research in helping those of my friends that are part of that journey that have asked me for advice, okay? Um, her name is Kat, 
and her uh, I believe her channel is Sacred Soul Rising but um, I'm gonna put the uh, link in the description box and you guys can check her channel out browse through her videos and if you got any questions I'm sure she's more than capable of ask answering them but in the meantime if you got questions for me this is a uh, this is a premiere so I'll be watching this with you and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have in the chat and if you guys got questions on any of the content I got you guys know what to do leave it in the comments you know your boy's gonna get to it eventually okay sometimes I, I don't get to the right away but I do read the comments and I will eventually get to it if I don't answer it it's probably because I haven't seen it yet or <laughs> Um, you know what? I'm not even going to go there. So let me take a quick break, and when I come back, we'll jump right in. Okay, family, I'm back. And without further ado, let's jump right in. Now, um, I did take some notes, so I'm going to be reading from my notes here today. And um, again, if you guys got any questions, leave them in the comment box below. Here we go. So Twin Flames, the purpose of the powerful magnetic energy between divine counterparts, all right? Uh, as a part of this, I am going to give you a quick, you know, quick rundown of what that journey looks like. And then we're going to talk about the magnetism and the separation and why separation is such a vital, vital element of the journey. All right. And then and then I'll wrap the video up. So for those of you uh, and again, you can watch my other twin flame videos in my description box below. And if you're wondering, again, I don't answer any personal questions. So for those of you that are new to, to my channel. I don't answer personal questions, so don't waste your time. Keep them to yourselves. All right, now, um, the journey typically, as I've understood it, begins with uh, something called a twin flame awakening where you have two souls. I do the double air quotes because from everything I've read and everything I've come across, they're, t they're really one soul. And that is why I gave you the magnet example in the beginning. That four by eight magnet snapped in is it snapped into two four by fours. It's still that same original magnet. OK, they're just broken into two separate parts for whatever reason the designer designed them to. But I'm going to come back to that at the end. Um, now, the uh, so it begins typically with something called a uh, uh, twin flame awakening or twin flame recognition. You have two individuals. I won't say two souls. You have two individuals that meet under various different circumstances. It. Uh, it, it may vary, whatever. Um, everybody's situation is different. But there's this instant soul recognition that takes place when they look into each other's eyes for the first time. When you meet somebody, what do you do? You look in their eyes. Hopefully, hopefully you're not looking at something else. <laughs> Fellas, I'm just saying, all right? Um, and ladies, y'all know y'all do it too. Don't be tripping. Y'all be trying. Y'all just slick with y'all. But anyway, let me stay on point. Um... So you look into the eyes. The eyes are called the windows of the soul. So that is why they call it soul recognition. You may have never met that person before in your life, but you see something that is so strange and wonderfully familiar that it it uh, it sets off this process in in your body. It sets off this energetic process in within your energy body. Now, um, the again, the general school of thought there is that the divine feminine is the first one that recognizes the divine masculine. But there's another school of thought out there that I've run across that says it is actually the divine masculine that first recognizes the divine feminine unbeknownst to her. OK, unbeknownst to her. Yeah. When when maybe the second or third meeting, then the divine feminine picks up on something. But the divine masculine sees something. But then they tend to they like, eh, you know what? Divine masculine energy is not spiritual, per se. So they it's a fleeting thought. It's like, mm, that person looks for something about that person. But then they move on with their lives or whatever. And it is the uh, divine feminine that triggers off this process that is, uh, you know, called chasing. Now, um, let's talk about that chasing. Why the divine feminine chases? Divine feminine energy, as I just said, is spiritual. It is spiritual in nature. So what is spiritual, divine, spiritual energy? It is all knowing. So at the innermost core, which is the soul, this this is an exterior shell, okay? At the core, that divine feminine energy recognizes something. And remember, divine feminine energy is spiritual and it is all knowing at its highest expression. So there is something that that divine feminine knows about this other individual that they're looking at that they recognize, all right? So at the soul level, 
even even unconscious to that carrier of that divine feminine energy, and that could be a male or a female. It just you know the, the, it's just energy. It's energy. I say this all the time. Everyone has three masculine, three feminine energy zones, and one neutral. Okay, so seven. And there are more than that. Some people get all into 115 or 114, 116 chakras or whatever. They extend way. We're dealing with the seven primary ones, okay? The root, the sacral, the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, the third eye, and the crown, all right? So those are the seven major ones I call, seven primary. Anyway, um, that divine feminine energy is all-knowing. So at the core level, unconscious to that divine feminine, the soul, at, at, there's an activation process that triggers and that soul goes to work. That divine feminine soul says it's time to go to work. Now, this is unconscious to the divine feminine embodiment. It's unconscious to them. They, they don't know why they have this magnetic attraction to this other individual. But at the soul level, there's an inner knowing. So remember and maybe I maybe I'm saying remember maybe I never said this before but let me take a pause here and explain what part of the journey of the soul is period and we're not even talking about any type of divine counterparts I'm talking about period one of the primary things that we are responsible for when incarnating is to bring our lower consciousness into alignment with our higher consciousness because there is a higher consciousness you do have a higher self that exists in a non-physical realm and that tends to be the driver of the experience that tends to be the driver of the experience what experience matt the experience of your incarnation whatever you incarnated to perform your memory is erased that's part of the agreement of coming to earth your memory is erased your memory of who you are is erased and part of the building of the soul muscle is for you to, through various different activities that are in your birth chart, you guys hear me harp on birth charts all the time, through various different activities that are in your birth chart, you are supposed to come back into alignment with your higher self. Now, why is that? Because when you can bring your lower self into alignment with your higher self in a conscious state, then you are truly operating as a God in human form. And for those of you that are rubbed the wrong way by that, it's written in the scriptures, ye are gods, all right? And maybe I'll put a link to that script or I'll put the uh, title screen, something on the bottom of the screen so you guys can see that and look it up for yourselves. So that purpose is to bring your, your lower self is supposed to be coming into alignment with your higher self so that you truly activate God mode and you are walking as a God on the earth. A lot of people don't get to that. A lot of people don't get to that. And part of the reason is the overwhelming number of distractions that are all around us all the time that keep us off our soul's path and our soul's purpose. All right. So I just wanted to give you guys that as an aside, your lower self is supposed to be coming into alignment with your higher self. So when you take it back to this whole journey and this magnetism that I'm getting ready to talk about, the that divine feminine at the soul, at the core level. The higher self, the higher consciousness of the embodiment of that divine feminine, when they meet and encounter their divine masculine, knows it is time to go to work. So different things start occurring in the lives of these different people who uh, identify as the or are the holders of the divine feminine archetype. And they begin to carry out different actions that they don't even know why they're doing it. Like it is so far removed from who they normally are and they even question themselves they say why why on earth did i do that why why do i feel like so but they are not in control at the conscious level the higher self the higher consciousness is in control we have a consciousness a subconscious and a super conscious the super conscious knows the whole game plan that is the driver the super consciousness is what broke off a part of itself for incarnation so that it could grow itself and become stronger this is deep y'all this is deep i got a video uh called uh what is the purpose of the soul or why does the soul incarnate i'll put that in the links um in the description box below as well so that divine feminine knows it's time to go to work at the higher level and so it begins doing these different physical activities that are so overwhelming that it comes off as chaser energy they come across as chasing 
when they probably have never been a chaser their entire lives but now they find themselves chasing this individual now the divine masculine on the flip side they run why because the divine masculine archetype is physical so it is it is it, its concern is things that have to do with day-to-day -day life it doesn't necessarily understand spirituality it may understand religion but remember religion and spirituality are not typically one and the same religion is masculine because there's a lot of throat chakra stuff that goes on in religion there's a lot of throat chakra stuff there's a lot of fear mongering that goes on in religion spirituality on the flip side tends to lend itself to freedom it is free of these physical constraints because we're talking spirit when the body stops working i'll say that the spirit exits it it exits but the spirit doesn't need a body to live the spirit aka soul some people uh use those interchangeably some people call them different uh, you can look at spirit as breath okay uh, let's call it soul you can look at the spirit as breath the the soul itself departs from that vehicle whether you want to call it soul or spirit doesn't matter it doesn't need that 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 body to exist it needs that body to have experience and experiences and to carry out things in the physical realm so when you're getting back to the the divine masculine archetype it only cares about things that are spirit uh physical it doesn't really it, it doesn't understand spiritual but it will that's part of the that's part of the divine design so um the divine feminine begins to chase with this powerful heart chakra activation and we know that the heart is one of the most powerful if not the most powerful arguably so the most powerful energy energy zone in everyone male or female the heart so the divine feminine archetype has her heart activated toward her matching counterpart and begins to chase energetically the divine masculine does not understand it it probably has never felt anything like that likewise with the divine feminine the divine feminine has never felt anything like that either but that divine masculine begins to run he's like whoa whoa get that away from me why because the divine masculine does not want to give up the life that he knows it does not want to give up the life that he knows and this is typical of male divine masculines and and again in one of my other videos i said that it you know the energy is energy it doesn't matter you could have a female being the divine masculine and a male being the divine feminine or in most cases the majority overwhelming majority of these these types of situations are women as a divine uh, feminine and men as divine masculine but the roles do reverse sometimes um anyway but it's typical of the divine of the male divine masculine he doesn't want to give up the life he knows divine masculine men they're typically you know and i'm not being judgmental if you if you're if you're divine masculine watching this by no means am i being judgmental but we know what goes on as a man myself i can tell you just as a man let's 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 call myself a teenage male what am i thinking about i'm thinking about making money and i'm thinking about women anyway anyway um um but you're thinking about things that are that satisfy the flesh money feeling good you know and that feeling good may not just be in the form of interaction with a woman it could be in the form of getting high getting drunk whatever whatever makes you feel good doing th stuff that that thrills you whatever um that divine masculine is not ready to give up that so um, or he feels like he's not he's not ready and is waiting for what he feels is the right time because maybe that divine masculine sees something in that divine feminine as well and i talked about that a minute ago but maybe they're like mm, right, maybe there's something there but I ain't ready to give up my life yet. I ain't ready to give this stuff up and go chase, go go dive into the unknown. Divine Feminine is like, what's good? We ready. Divine Feminine is like, let's go. Let's go jump into the unknown. This is new. Let's go find out. Let's 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 see what's uh let's see what's behind the curtain, you know. Divine masculine, like, look, I ain't I, I got other stuff going on. Whatever is behind that curtain, that's your business. Okay? So that divine masculine wants to wait until certain conditions are met before he can even intimate exploring the unknown with what this divine feminine recognizes as some type of connection between the two of them so what happens next the separation the separation the magnetism the magnetism's there and i'm gonna talk about that i, I haven't really gotten into that magnetism or what draws them together but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tie it together at the end um what happens next with this runner chaser is that 
God, source, divine, however you want to label it, separates the two of them physically. And this separation happens for two reasons. Number one, so they stop hurting each other, which would only serve to further delay their coming together for their divine purpose and mission. If you watch my other videos, you know that um, divine counterparts have a divine purpose for meeting and coming together in a lifetime. In this life, let's not talk about past lifetimes. Some of you understand past lives. Some of you don't accept that. Some of you are still trying to learn about it. So I'm going to talk about that. Let's just deal with the current. These two have crossed paths for a very specific divine purpose. And it has it is tied to some sort of divine mission. I've talked about that in other videos. I won't go too much into that here. But if you got a question, drop it in the comments. Um, so source number one separates them so that they stop hurting each other. What does that hurting look like? The divine feminine's energetic chasing causes so much discomfort to the divine masculine that it triggers him or her into painful responses. All right. What do those painful responses look like? They may look like harsh words. They may come in the form of ghosting. They may come in the form of breadcrumbing. Those are those are the three big ones. The, the, the divine masculine may speak harshly to the divine feminine. And again, it's not to be hurtful intentionally. It is the energy that does not want to let go. And I'll tell you about why that is in just a minute. So it comes across in the, in the form of harsh words, ghosting and breadcrumbing harsh words. Ah, oh, man, you leave me alone. Whatever, something, whatever, whatever will hurt that divine feminine's feelings. That divine masculine is probably going to say it. OK, ghosting. Number two, divine feminine is reaching out, trying to get in touch with the divine masculine, trying to talk, trying to have a conversation. Eep, nothing. Cricket, 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 cricket. Nothing. Crickets, crickets. They get no response. Phone calls go unanswered. Um, voice messages go unresponded to. Um, text messages go unresponded to. And and then, of course, that's ghosting. Breadcrumbing is they might say something that gets the divine feminine like, oh, OK, we're talking again. And then, boom, they disappear again. And then later on down the line, they might say one or two things and then, boom, they disappear again. That is called breadcrumbing. That's leaving breadcrumbs. So what's the purpose of leaving breadcrumbs? It goes back to a to a, a fairy tale or fable uh, childhood story. Um, I believe it's is it Little Red Riding Hood. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong or leave it in the comments. It's been a long time ago. But the breadcrumbs are left so that they could find their way back. That divine masculine knows that there's something about that divine feminine and they don't want to completely let go. So they breadcrumb. Those are the three painful responses. Meanwhile, that divine feminine is like, man, this is some bull. I'm look, I, 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 man, later for that. So what does that do? The divine feminine is so tired of hurting that they flip the pain, but it happens energetically as well. The divine feminine simply withdraws. They withdraw and they find ways to block their energy. They want to find a way to block their energy. They may, they may block the, the divine masculine on social media. They, they may just energetically stop thinking about them or try, try anyway. Um, if a thought comes up, they may respond to that thought with the memory of the pain and say, man, F this person, man. I, psh, yo, man, later for them. Whatever happens to them happens. You know, God bless them. I hope they have a nice life, whatever. Um, they don't mean to be hurtful, but they are energetically responding to the hurt caused by the divine masculine so that withdrawal in turn causes pain to the divine masculine why does that happen well because the divine masculine is aware of that energetic connection and both sides of this twin this this single soul both sides of this single soul once they have that activation that initial awareness that initial soul recognition it turns on an energetic connection that is never turned off again. It can only be blocked by the divine. The divine can block it. The divine can block one side of that connection or block both sides of that connection, but it never turns off. It is activated. So because of that, that divine masculine, even though they're running, they feel the presence of the divine feminine with them all the time. The same holds true for the divine feminine. Even though she's withdrawn and blocking that divine masculine, the presence of that divine masculine is with them all the time. And when you think you're running away, you're like, all right, I'm good. Something will happen. You you may 
You may be out in public or something and see somebody that has the same name. You may be watching television and their name pops up on the bottom of the screen. Um, you you may hear their voice, literally. Um, you in something. You may you may smell them. There's something called Claire. Uh, I think it's Claire Gustins or Claire uh, Claire Salience, and where you pick up the it's it's a you you spiritually smell a person's essence that is not in the same room with you. So these are things that the divine puts back in into the face of of both parties, and so to remind them that hey this connection is still active. But again, the divine masculine is aware of the divine feminine's presence. So um, uh, energetically, and when the divine feminine starts to withdraw her energy, it causes pain energetically to the divine masculine. It causes pain. They may certain things may start to occur in their lives as well. I've I've, heard, I've read that in places. Certain things may uh, start to occur in their lives that cause them to remember that divine feminine. Um, a lot of times, that divine masculine, one of the things that they do in their running phase is they'll go and and find a replacement. They'll go and find a replacement that they hope will help them take their mind off of that divine um, feminine. And when things don't work out with that replacement, they're reminded that, man, you know, this uh, man, divine, divine feminine never treated me like that. They, they're always nice to me, whatever. Um, too nice in some cases, but they're, they're always nice to me. At least I don't have to deal with this. I ain't going to say no. I ain't going to say no. No four letter words today, Matt. No four letter words. Anyway, um, so that is the pain. The, the, the pain for the divine feminine is that she is being ghosted, breadcrumbed, um, um, harsh words spoken to her. The pain for the divine masculine is feeling that energetic withdrawal. So the, the, the so, so uh, source separates them. So for that, that's that's reason number one. I know I took a while for that, but um, source separates them. So they stop hurting each other. And that separation, again, usually comes in the form of a physical separation and be energetic separation where the um the divine says i'm gonna put both of y'all in time out okay now not the second reason for that is that so that they both can heal their brokenness which is typically the product of some childhood trauma both of them have some type of childhood trauma that caused them some sort of pain or wounding that they carried into adulthood that has affected them for the better part of their adult lives. Now, um, what does that look like? The divine feminine heals from codependency, which is a low vibrational energy that causes, that is in fact is the low vibrational energy that causes the divine masculine to run, okay? It causes, it, it, it's this codependency, like typically what happens, there's some sort of abandonment issue or something, so, something happened in that divine feminine's life when they were a child that triggered uh, codependency. And it and, and let me let me share this with you. It may not always have happened in their childhood. It could be past life residue. Maybe they were abandoned or felt a sense of abandonment abandonment or left or whatever in a previous lifetime and then they transitioned and were born again into this lifetime. The soul memory never leaves. It's the consciousness that does not remember, but the soul memory never leaves. This is why people are able to go into a hypnotherapist, have a past life regression and remember certain activities or certain things that happened in previous lifetimes. OK, and they're usually significant, not they don't remember brushing their teeth on the day before their 14th birthday. I mean, that's that's insignificant. They'll remember brushing their teeth the day before their 14th birthday in that past lifetime. If they went to brush their teeth and they fell out. That's something big that they would remember, but just randomly brushing their teeth, spitting, whatever. Nah, they don't remember that. So anyway, the divine feminine has to heal from codependency, which is a low, low vibrational energy that causes the divine masculine to run. He feels that codependency. Hey, I need you. I want you. I need you in my life. It's like, Ugh, what is that? Get away from me. It causes them to run. The divine masculine heals from having a massive ego. A massive ego it is that massive ego which causes him to exhibit the behaviors that hurt the divine feminine massive ego is what me 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 I'm the only one that matters so that is what causes them to exhibit the behaviors that cause the divine feminine to withdraw that massive ego says man I don't care about you <laughs> oh well they don't care about hurting somebody else because it's not them so it's like if this is what it takes to get you away from me screw you screw your feelings whatever now um the healing process for the divine feminine begins with self-love. It begins with self-love. The healing process for the divine masculine is initiated 
by divinely orchestrated events that cause the breakdown of the divine masculine's ego. Any number of events, you can fill in the blank, whatever bruises that ego. If you think, let me give you an example. I'm the baddest man on the football team, man. Can't nobody run faster than me. I'm the baddest sprinter. I can talk to all y'all any kind of way because this team is nothing without me. And then that football player has an injury. And now they got to sit out. Hey, what's the, what's the prognosis, Doc? Man, you got to sit the rest of the season out. Sorry. What? The rest of the season? Yeah, it's going to take that long to heal and, and recover, rehab, all that. You got to sit the rest of the season out. Rest of the season, they sat out. But they brought a guy up off the bench that was that was playing behind this guy and now he's running better and he's working better with the offense and so now this divine not the, I'm, i'll say divine masculine now this running back when they're done recovering and they're ready to come back the coaching staff and ownership's looking at you like hey man listen uh that was a bad injury you had uh last season <sighs> you know I, I know you're healed but we can't count on it not breaking down again and this kid right here he's He's putting up better numbers than you did, big guy. Um, we're probably going to shop you. And if we can't get a good deal for you, we're just going to we're gonna release you on waivers and hopefully you can find another team. Sorry. Uh, we, we, we loved having you on the team. Sorry. Now that massive ego is broken. Now they got to humble themselves. Now they got to humble themselves and start over. Now, they get on, now he gets on his knees and says, Lord, I, don't, I, I know I, I, did, I did a lot of people wrong. Um, I talked to people any kind of way when I had that chance. I wasn't. I wasn't uh, a good steward of the gifts that you gave me. If you give me one more chance to prove myself, I'm 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 gonna I'm 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 gonna be a different person. I'm gonna be a changed person. This this thing has changed me. And that running back, God honors that prayer. And that running back, he gets one more opportunity with another team. And maybe he doesn't rise to the stardom that he had on that initial team. Maybe he does. I don't know. But he's a different person. He's thanking the offensive lineman for blocking now. He's buying watches for the offense. Hey, man, listen, we're on an eight-game winning streak. I'm averaging over 150 yards rushing the game. I couldn't have done that if y'all weren't blocking the way y'all did, man. Man, I appreciate y'all, man. Listen, here, here's something for you. And listen, anybody, look, if your families need anything, man, I got a big contract. I don't need all this, man. If y'all need something, come see me, man. Come see me. That is what healing from that massive ego looks like. I just gave you guys that example. Um, for the Divine Feminine, she's, she simply... Has the, her healing process begins with self-love. Why am I looking for love outside of me? Why am I looking for somebody to validate me? Why am I looking for somebody to tell me I'm okay? Why am I looking for somebody to tell me I'm I'm important to them? Why am I looking for somebody to tell me I'm special? Um, why am I looking for somebody to tell me they like me? Why am I looking for somebody to tell me they like me back? Whatever. I love me. I'm, I'm pretty special. I, I'm okay. You know what happens when that divine feminine turns that magnetism inward that love because love is magnetic love is magnetic you know what happens when that divine feminine turns that love inward it makes them more magnetic you see what happens with a magnet is when you take a magnet depending on the way that magnet is is, is faced which side of that magnet is is up that magnet may have energy that pushes things out in a way but when that magnet turns back around the other way it draws to it it draws to it so what happens with that divine feminine is she learns self-love and turns that love inward and starts giving it to herself. And then what happens is a whole nother phenomenon that this divine feminine is now attracting people. They're attracting animals. They're attracting fortunate situations. They're attracting uh, 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 money. They're attracting all sorts of things that would be considered luck by some. But what it is, is the byproduct of them turning their love inward and loving themselves. When you love yourself, you become magnetic. When you don't love yourself and you're trying to push in on others, you chase, you're in chasing energy. You push them away. So that's what the healing process looks like for both of those sides of that connection. Now, once they've healed, the divine sets off a series of events that ends the separation and brings them back into healthy communication, wherein they notice the change in each other. The divine feminine presents compassion without the low vibrational codependent chaser energy. What does that look like? That might look like or sound like, hey, you know, I know I was on you and, and you know, on you and chasing you. And look, I put that behind me and I want you to know something in, in all honesty. 
whether or not we end up together, I want you to be your absolute best you. Hey, if you ever need anything, I'm here. Nice talking to you. That's a different energy now being presented by that divine feminine because she has not forgotten her divine masculine, but she loves herself enough now to let that divine masculine go. If you love something, you got to be willing to let it go because if it's yours, it's always going to come back to you. You cannot be separated from anything that is yours. The only way you're ever separated from anything that is yours is if you're not ready to receive it. That's it. So the Most High will put you in time out and build you to where you're ready to receive that blessing. If you're somebody that blows money, why is the Most High going to give you $10 million? If you're somebody that blows money, you're not ready to receive it. When you demonstrate that you are ready to receive that blessing, the blessing is delivered without you having to chase it. So that's Divine Feminine. That's an example of what that Divine Feminine looks like when they heal. The Divine Masculine presents the energy of change in, for example, Oh, uh, you know, first of all, they stopped the, 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 the behaviors that were causing pain to the divine feminine before. Why? Because typically the divine feminine loves herself so much at that point that those things would not even face her the same way that they did. OK, that's number one. Um, the other thing, the divine, the divine masculine presents a, a, an increase in spirituality. Um, they may say something like, oh, I don't do X, Y, and Z anymore. That no longer interests me. Here's what I'm into now. And it typically is uh, the example of them beginning to embrace different forms of spirituality. Because what is happening now is the yin and yang energy is flowing 360 degrees. That divine feminine is stepping more into her divine masculine energy by healing and loving on herself and then um, not chasing and being more okay and stable and feeling secure. Feelings of security is masculine energy. Hey, I'm secure enough into myself to where I'm all right. I'm all right come hella high water. I don't need anybody to make me feel love because guess what? I love myself. That typically, that is her using her divine feminine energy in a masculine way. That divine masculine now, he's bringing his feminine energy into alignment because he's getting out of the physical and now exploring the spiritual side of his own nature. So what is then discovered is that the, their interests are now in alignment with a higher purpose. With a higher purpose. Now that their interests are in alignment with the purpose for which they were brought together in this lifetime, or, for, or the purpose for which they met in this lifetime, however you want to put it, it is then that the divine begins to reveal the joint purpose for which the two came together in this lifetime. Yep, yep. So, when the divine feminine meets the divine masculine, it takes them through this whole process. And again, you guys, I won't redo the videos I did. You can look at those. But the divine feminine is typically triggered into her soul's work by the appearance of the divine masculine. So the divine masculine, in many ways, becomes a muse for the divine feminine. Because the divine feminine then goes on her path to do what she incarnated in this earth to do. And vice versa. When the divine masculine has had that ego death and they've shed the the me, 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 I, 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 I'm the most important person in the world, most important on the planet, screw everybody else. When they shed that and they're like, what what can I do to be of service? Then then they come into their divine purpose and their mission for which they incarnated the magnet, the magnet, a magnet. Let's talk about this magnet really quick. I made some notes Sorry, here. Um, the magnetism. There is a reason for that powerful magnetism, and I gave it to you in the beginning. The, that four by eight magnet that was split into two four by four magnets is the same magnet. It's the same magnet, and two magnets that are drawn together cannot be separated. Now, there's a purpose. I went through the purpose for the separation is typically healing. Let's let's uh, let's say the well. I won't I won't re, I won't go back into that again, but. Maybe there's a side of the magnet that needs to be purged. If you don't separate that magnet for that one side to be purged and for this other side to be perhaps recharged and have having its magnetic energy enhanced, the, the mission, it, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. What do I mean? You got, let's say, let's call the divine masculine the side that needs to be purged. Okay. If that four by eight 
magnet is not split into two four by fours, then whatever rigorous scrubbing, um, cleansing, uh, boiling, whatever rigorous cleansing methodologies need to be employed to cleanse and purify that divine masculine side of that magnet, um, whatever those are, if those two magnets are one, that 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 other side, that divine feminine side of that magnet has to go through that same purging and that same coarse, harsh cleansing product pro, uh, pro, uh, process. When in fact, that side of the magnet is 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 pristine. It just needs to have a a charge reapplied to it. So why potentially damage that side of the magnet when it doesn't have the same two or three inches of of grime and dirt on it so separation has to hey you you need to be charged you over here this side this side of this magnet needs to be cleansed if i put this whole thing through it then i could i could possibly risk damaging this half of this magnet so let me split them let me let me take them back to this and put them back together now that four by eight magnet is more powerful than the four by four individual magnets that are on the table that four by that four by eight magnet has a greater purpose otherwise it wouldn't be four by eight y'all stay with me y'all understand what that means y'all understand what that means that four by eight magnet is bigger for a reason god doesn't do anything in vain that four by eight magnet is bigger for a reason but guess what it has to be divided so that these two halves can be worked on and guess what those two appearing seemingly two different four by four magnets that are really one four by eight magnet they have the same capabilities as the rest of the four by four magnets around them and they have their different things that they do but in divine timing in alignment with a divine purpose the two are brought back together now um i wrote here and this this may be relevant a magnet cannot draw plastic wood cloth or any other organic material a magnet can attract things that are metallic, but these things can be pried away with the right amount of force. It can attract other things that are metallic. We're talking about false divines, if you will. Okay, they 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 have their own mag magnetic um, uh, properties to them, but they are not the original magnet. So, however, two magnets with matching electromagnetic frequencies once drawn together form an electromagnetic seal that can only be broken if the source of the magnetic energy is turned off. The source of that energy is the divine. So do the math. Do the math. Um, the, the magnetism that is experienced between divine counterparts is a necessary component for them coming back into being that bigger four by eight magnet okay because they are the same magnet they've just been split for whatever divine reason okay but they're that one magnet you cannot say these are two different magnets they know they're the same magnet everybody else sees them the other four by four magnets see four by four magnets but the divine sees a four by eight magnet that he had to separate to for some reason but he originally had them as a four by eight for a reason and they will be a four by eight magnet again because they never stopped being a four by eight magnet it only they only appear to be a four two four by four magnets but they're one four by eight magnet that one four by eight magnet has a higher magnetism than the other four by fours on the table it's there's more magnetic energy in a four by eight magnet than there is in a four by four magnet if all, all other things being equal all other things being equal so um, when you talk about purpose, and I'm going to answer that question by Jenny K, I believe it is. Um, she asked, I'm going to answer that question after this, and then I'll wrap this up. Um, when you talk about purpose, let's look at energy. Magnetic energy draws, okay? But magnetic energy is also high vibrational. This is why it is so important to maintain high vibrational energy. Now, when you look at what is going on in the earth today, you can start to make sense of why there is this. For people that are in that community, understand why there's this massive, apparent twin flame awakening. The earth is elevating its frequency, all right? A four by eight magnet has a higher magnetism than a four by four magnet. And that's not slighting 
the other four by four magnets. They have their own purposes. But the divine creates, creates all things unto himself. So he's got a reason and a purpose for all things. I think that the higher the magnetic frequency is of the love frequency being emitted in the earth, the more it drives out things that are not natural and that do not match the love frequency. The earth is in a major healing process because the earth has been sickened by low vibrational energy over a couple of thousand years or so. And it is time for it to return to purity. So this is what's happening. This is, this is my opinion of what's happening. Now for Jenny that asked the question about I did a video where it was directed toward divine masculines that pretty much said, how can you tell a true divine feminine from a false divine feminine? Jenny asked me for the divine feminines, how can they tell the difference between a true divine masculine and a false divine masculine? It's pretty simple. The first thing you have to do, Jenny, is you have to raise your frequency if you feel like you're not in the highest vibrational frequency if you're not operating in the love frequency if you're operating in emotions that map to lower vibrations and i'll put the uh i'll put the map here on the screen if you are in low vibrational emotions then it is easy to not be able to perceive remember spiritual energy is feminine energy so if you are not able to perceive the difference between a true divine masculine versus a false divine masculine, you need to raise, you need to work on getting in higher vibrational emotions. Okay. Now, once that happens, now there's some other things that'll help you to, to, um, to tell the difference, but you have to turn that love inward. As I said on this video, you have to, at some point you got to go inward. You got to go into hermit mode. For those of you who know, you know, you know what that means. You got to go into hermit mode and build yourself and love on yourself. Build yourself, love on yourself, and then come out. How can you love somebody else if you don't have love for yourself? You can't love somebody. Else. It's like the whole airplane thing. Secure your own oxygen mask before you try to help somebody with theirs because you might pass out and then not be able to help yourself or anybody else. Secure your own oxygen mask. Secure your own love. Love on yourself first. Once you do that, you're going to raise your vibration. You're going to become magnetic. Guess what? High vibrational energy repels low vibrational energy. That's going to help you to tell right there. Once you're in high vibrational energy, you're going to repel things that don't belong in your life. I did a video talking about that. I was at the Riverside. I don't remember the title. What can water teach us about the law of attraction? I want you to watch that video, Jenny. Um, what can water teach us about the law of attraction? And that will help you there. So to answer your question, how do you know... Uh, the difference between a true divine ma masculine versus a false divine masculine the number one telltale sign is when you are done you you can never be over a true divine masculine if you're a divine feminine you can release them with love but you'll never be over them they'll always be in your heart because once that activation once that twin flame activation happens it's turned on it's 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 a switch that's turned on it doesn't get turned off again However, so you can release them with love if they're in low vibrational energy. You can release them with love, but you'll never truly be able to forget about them. And, and, you, and you're always hoping that the best for them. You're hoping that they come into union with themselves. You're hoping that they come into union with themselves where they can come into alignment and they can align their inner divine masculine with their inner divine feminine. And when that happens, that magnetism is going to draw you guys back together. Okay? But... If it's a false divine masculine, when you're done with them, you're done. You're done. Like you can forget, you forget about them. You ain't dreaming about them. If you're dreaming about them, it ain't nothing nice. <laughs> so it it you you will know. You will know because true high vibrational divine feminine energy is all knowing. So you will know when you're done with a false. And I don't even like to call them the false false divine masculines. I don't. I think uh, I think the false tends to go with divine feminine more so. So like if um. A divine masculine can be tricked into thinking somebody is their divine feminine and they find out they're a karmic entity or a lesson or whatever. But when you're the divine feminine, divine feminine energy is all knowing. So if you're having trouble deciphering, it just means that you need to inject more love into yourself. You need to do more self love, more self care. Because once you're at a certain high vibrate, once you're at a certain vibrational ener energy or level, you won't, you won't even have to ask that question. You'll know. You'll, you'll just know. 
divine feminine energy is all knowing. Divine masculine energy is physical. So that's what I got for you, Jenny. And that's what I got for you all today. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are new to this channel and you like my content, you can browse through and see some of my other content. I'm not a twin flame coach. Um, I'm not. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I, I am somebody who was asked to do twin flame videos a long time ago, over a year ago, almost two years ago, by friends of mine that identify me as a guy that knows a lot of things about a lot of things. And so they come to me advice for, for relationship advice and, hey, you ever heard of this thing called Twin Flame? I got, I got my own story with how I came across that knowledge. Um, but I use that and, not but, and I use that knowledge to help my friends, okay, that are in that journey. And they, they've been asking me for years to do a video. I didn't want to do it because I'm like, you know, um, part of this stuff still feels like it's not even, or, or part of this stuff still seems like it's not even real when you read about it and you hear these stories and you read these different accounts. But... Let me go a little bit deeper and because i'm a guy that people say knows a lot of things about a lot of things i decided to do a video so um anyway i don't even know how i got onto that i'm gonna wrap this video up oh i, I know i was saying it now i'm not a twin flame coach most of my videos are not twin flames i think i got less than five five or less five or fewer twin flame videos all of my stuff is about breaking down the spiritual concepts in the scripture and showing that the bible is not a religious book it is a spiritual book so i talk about that the spirituality and scriptures general spirituality and i talk about astrology because astrology and spirituality to me go hand in hand um so anyway that's that if you like that type of content then i'm your guy hit the subscribe button and last but not least i'll end this video i won't talk about the books i've written and stuff this video has gone on long enough and you guys, if you watch any of my other videos, you already know how to get in touch with me. But that is the best way to support my channel. People ask me all the time, Matt, how can we support your work? How can we support your channel? The best support you can do with my channel is buying one of my books. I don't ask for donations. I don't, I don't knock anybody who does. But for me, I would just rather my books get out there, okay? The, the more people that read my books and tell the story, the more people that are getting the, the goal or the purpose for which I wrote those books. And that is to help uplift to help uplift humanity. I do it through entertainment. I do it through educating, education and sharing knowledge, sharing the things that I've learned over the years. Uh, because, you know, if we all help each other to rise up, it's just going to be a better place to live for everybody. So that's all I got for y'all. Tell somebody you love them and mean it. How do you mean it? You have to show it. Love is a verb. It is a noun as well. But when we take care of the verb form, the noun always takes care of itself. Peace, y'all.